Well, all right then. Today we're going to be looking at this game between Corvinus playing as the Pink Order of the Dragon versus the Muslim playing as the uh, Teal Jondak Civilization. Uh, the map is going to be Canal, which is uh, the new hybrid map. Typically I'm not the biggest fan of hybrid maps, but today I kind of like it just because uh, it, it's very aggressively laid out. These uh, fishing ships are not going to be safe from land units, which I think is good. And then on top of that, I'm pretty sure that shorefish uh, just aren't as good as like what they used to be in the earlier stages of Age of Empires 4. So we're just going to have a quick look at this game. Uh, the idea being, let's talk about Order of the Dragon and like what that civilization like kind of has as as the backbone of its design. Uh, and that being Lanchester's Law, where essentially it's a mathematical formula that uh, utilizing differential equations that kind of tells you, hey, uh, this army will beat this army. That sort of thing, right? Army A will beat army B. And um, the point that I'm trying to make here in today's video, hopefully we'll see, we'll see how it goes. As we have a uh, Jean d'Arc here chopping down some wood. The point being that higher quality units, which is to say units with more hit points, are just generally speaking mathematically a little bit better than their normalized counterparts. So that's what we're looking to see here. Because get the Order of the Dragon, uh, the meat and potatoes of that civilization is just having higher quality units. Now, for example, these uh, these villagers, they cost 60 instead of 50. They come with the extra carry capacity right off the bat, and they gather, I believe, 20% 20, 20 faster as well. So I want to see exactly how this how this game plays out. We have uh, both civilizations opting for the uh, quick Dark Age uh, dock here. Fairly even, uh, just uh, overall, right? Uh, both players kind of scouting, ar scouting around the map for their sheep. Looks like Jean d'Arc went from the lumber camp and decided to go butcher some sheep here. We are friends with sheep. And then, you know, Order the Dragon. We're actually, uh, this is pretty creative out of Corvinus, but uh, utilizing the straggler trees. Like this is gone, this is gone, and now he's working on this one. Uh, prior to building a lumber camp, just to get this dock and the few extra fishing ships out a little bit faster. I kind of like that. Um, it, it's not like the straggler trees are as good as a tree that is adjacent to a lumber camp. Uh, but just getting that 50 wood a little bit earlier, I think, is uh, pretty much a good move. And then here we have uh, the Muslim doing the right thing, in my opinion, which is to build everything with Shondakh. She builds faster. Uh, you save at villager seconds on your normal villagers doing that. So, yep. Uh, just utilizing Shondakh build every building and uh, kind of work from there and she's really strong at building too 33% uh, faster building so you can you can utilize her on the landmark and age quite nicely I, I honestly feel like Jean d'Arc is almost the more fun version of the French civilization uh, Jean d'Arc herself is a really fun hero unit one that actually matters uh, you know if you lose the Khan with the Mongols it's not that big of a deal uh, it's kind of a meme at this point, right? But if you lose Jean d'Arc, I think that actually has uh, a fairly big impact on the game. Here we have Corvinus looking to wall off um, his side of the river here, or the canal, if you will. And then uh, the Muslim, not yet with the walls, you know, but uh, doubtlessly that will come here soon. So yeah, um, I, I think Jean d'Arc as a hero unit is probably one of the best hero units in the game, uh, both in design and in strength, right? Uh, she she actually like matters a fair amount, and then um, well the other nice thing with the uh, Jean d'Arc civilization is that you get those um, <clears throat> the discount for your stables and fun stuff without having to utilize the keeps. So I think that's actually uh, quite good. All right, so here we have the mine work palace coming in out of Corvinus, uh, dropping off a, a crap ton of sheep here. You know, it's not like sheep are the number one resource on this map just because of the amount of shore fish that you have to work with. But nonetheless, you know, it's good to get those sheep going. And then it uh, looks like we're going to be dropping down some walls here. Kind of protecting this northern flank of the base. Protects this gold mine. Looks like this one is this gold mine is actually going to be used as part of the wall. Which, yeah, why not? I would, I would agree with that, right? Uh, on the other side here, the Muslim. 
Yep, okay, so utilizing Jeanne d'Arc to build the uh, landmark. By the way, if you send Jeanne d'Arc to build the landmark, she'll get to level 2 um, pretty much right off of that. As long as there's not too many villagers helping her out. Um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward game just now for the time being. It looks like a second dock, dock coming out of the Muslim here. Uh, but putting in those walls as well so that the... Uh, Fishing ships will be kind of like safe versus the other players' navies. So we're just going to keep an eye on that. We have some more sheep here being dropped off uh, to the town center of the Muslim. But of course, you know, uh, the shore fish being the real meat and potatoes of this map here. So it's a pretty cool hybrid map, I think. It's really aggressive. Uh, I like the design. I like the layout. So we're going to see exactly how this game pans out here. Uh, yeah, what do we have here? School of Cavalry out of the Muslim. I don't see I don't see too much crazy action here. I'm just gonna scroll in between both bases uh, of the respective players more so than anything else. There's not a lot of action going on. We have 27 to 32, so it looks like the Muslim with like that second dock is just slightly pulling ahead here in terms of uh, economy. And then yeah, these guys train slightly slower as well. So just naturally speaking, uh, the Muslim should pull ahead in villager count. But again, these villagers do gather a little bit faster. So something to bear in mind. Looks like we're finishing up this wall here. Actually utilizing the berry bushes uh, as a part of the wall as well. That's, that's just so interesting. They did change walls uh, with the recent uh, expansion. So galley number one out in the field right now. Really a defensive galley just to protect these fishing ships from like units and stuff like that. Not, not really an aggressive one to go and, and, and impede the fishing of the opponent right there is what I would have to say. Knight number one is out on the map here. We also have Jean d'Arc that was made into a uh, hunter, or huntress would be more accurate, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, with a scout. Now, the the thing that you can do with Jean d'Arc here is to take out the boar. Kind of like utilize the uh, scout here. <laughs> the, I don't know if you guys saw that, but the, uh, the, the running of that scout really amused me. Uh, so yeah, you can use Jeanne d'Arc to uh, pick up the boar, tank some of those hits with sh with her because she does uh, heal up quite quickly. And there you go, 50, 50 experience right off the bat. She that gets that much closer to her level 3. And now we have a knight. We have Jeanne d'Arc. It looks like this galley is going to be moving forward here. Kind of trying to... Well... Yeah, pushing away Jeanne d'Arc here. Like I said, this is a hero unit that actually like matters. Unlike the Khan. Now, don't get me wrong, the Khan does matter, but the impact of the, uh, that... Uh, that this hero has in the game is a little bit more important, I would have to say. What do we have? Uh, H3 coming in here out of Corvinus. We have the Regnant Cathedral. Kind of interesting, though, the Order of the Dragon versus uh, HRE. Because the Prelates, they're not really prevalent. The, pre the Prelates are not prevalent. I don't know. Huh. Uh, compared to, you know, HRE Classic, right? So this Regnant's Cathedral, which does the same thing, by the way. Acts as a monastery, all relics generate plus 100% gold when a wall garrison all that fun stuff right um it's a good landmark but you don't get that tempo that you get with hre because with hre you already have those prelates out on the map here so uh this galley just doing a really really good job at protecting these fishing ships from jean d'arc these units are not really finding too much damage here the investment of units uh out of the muslim here is just not quite finding any damage here. Corvinus is playing a very nice, safe game. Has a lot of walls up, so that, that that's going to make it really awkward for these knights to do anything. Uh, looks like we're picking up this wolf here with Jean d'Arc in order to really start t stacking that experience as much as possible. And then we have Divine Arrow here. Uh, that is, those stacks are building up right now. So something to note, by the way, is that if you take uh, Jean d'Arc and you garrison her inside a town center or a keep or what have you, uh, you lose these stacks, so be careful not to do that. The Muslim kind of posturing on the map right now. I'm not really going to be able to find too much damage here in this area. This town center should be able to push away these units. Now that said, the knights do have a fair amount of staying power. There we go. So we do have a divine arrow uh, that was dropped in on there. But unfortunately, we just lose on that right there. Um, is She'll spawn for free. So uh, trading that versus a villager is probably not that bad. Unfortunately, you do lose those stacks on her uh, when that happens. This knight getting completely pushed away here by the galley, and then uh, these these French knights right now just kind of running around. Um, one was lost. The second one looks like it's on its way out. 
Uh, these are feudal age royal knights, so they're not exactly the strongest, especially considered compared to like the gilded knight, which is a 400 hit point <laughs> unit, which is just ridiculous. Ridiculously strong. Oh, it looks like that knight actually does go down here. And if you look at the army value, um, well, it's about even between both players, but you will notice that uh, uh, the Muslim has lost just a little bit more right there in that exchange. Nonetheless, you know, the, the game is far from over, far from over, of course. Now these shorefish, uh, they're going to be shorefished out of the map here. So as this food kind of runs out, uh, you know, the, the dynamic of the game will change just a little bit right there. Oh, and then this is, like, this is why I like this map as well, is because, like, you can actually put some pressure onto the fishing ships, unlike a lot of other maps, hybrid maps. Gilded Knight kind of running around, looking for some damage as well. Royal Knight coming up behind it, of course, that's uh, more than twice the hit points on the Gilded Knight right there. And that's what I'm talking about with Lanchester's Law there. Uh, obviously, this is a single unit. And it should lose to these three knights, no question about it. Uh, but as soon as you start stacking some numbers up, like that's when uh, Order of the Dragon gets a little bit more intimidating, in my opinion. So 52 to 54 looks really even here. Um, the Muslim not trying to force the issue here, as the veteran royal knights now, they're up to the normal Castle Age stats. The Gilded Knight is above Imperial stats already. So I'm back, back on the field. Unfortunately, like I said, we did lose those stacks, and then obviously you're not building up that experience. If she could be level 3 right now, that would be absolutely fantastic for the Muslim, but she quite isn't quite there yet. And now these fishing ships being pushed off of the map, thanks to uh, these Gilded Knights right there. So overall, pretty cool play out of Corvinus. He is going to have to deal with, these, uh, with the food situation. Actually, maybe build another dock right there and get these a little bit closer, what have you, but... Uh, yeah. These units just have too much staying power right now. Was that four? Four Gilded Knights? Yeah, four Gilded Knights. That's 1,600 hit points. And remember, you need to kill one fully before it stops dealing damage. Thankfully, some Arbaletrier have been added into the mix here. So Corvinus is going to have to hightail it out of there. Of course, don't forget that these units cost more as well, you know, so it's not like a complete, like, Civ bonus, right? You, you have to pay for that, for those extra hit points. But nonetheless, you have to look at this military population and remember that the, uh, that the HRE probably have a little bit more power per population than the French do, I think, in, the, in this situation. Looks like we're starting to work on the sacred site right here. Holding a relic, that's a little bit greedy, but you know, I don't mind it just because of the amount of military pressure and presence that we have on the map here, thanks to Corvinus. Uh, thanks to these units, I should say. One relic in here, one relic in there. One relic in the top, and then it looks like the Muslim is starting to try to yoink the rest of the relics off of the map as well. 46 to 56, but again, these villagers of Corvinus do gather a little bit faster, so you have to bear that in mind. There's, the relics are in there as well. Uh, we have the income showing up right here, if you want to look at that. Kind of gauge what both players are up to. And, uh, yeah, both players just kind of, like, walling off. It's, it's pretty interesting, like, that northern flank. I guess, I guess both north and south flanks. This army is getting healed up a little bit, I, I believe, by Jean d'Arc. No, I'm sorry, that's the uh, chivalry. Something in here is capturing a sacred site. Is it her? Yeah, it's right there. Capturing sacred site. So there you have it. And then this one has been captured by uh, Corvinus up here. <laughs> Building the uh, Pentagon in the uh, medieval age here that's what Corvinus is doing here deleting these wall segments looking to mine out that camp as well pretty interesting like the amount of gold that Corvinus is looking to gather here the relics not being able to carry the gold income all by themselves it looks like we need to supplement that with some actual mining 
we do have some gilded crossbowmen and actually it looks like you can also inspire them just like the normal prelate from the HRE uh, so if you couple that like healing that the prelates give as well as the inspired warriors you're, you're looking at a pretty pretty gnarly death ball right there and now we have some gilded crossbowmen joining in on the fray as well um, 140 hit points here compared to like what 80 so I don't know this this uh, small group of, of units here out of Corvinus does look pretty intimidating I'm not gonna lie game state is still a little bit even we do have the Muslim with just a little bit more villager population right there of course you have to balance that out with relics and uh, faster gathering uh, what are they called anyway gilded villagers dragon villagers okay Yeah, the income for Corvinus is just out of this world compared to the Muslims' economy. And I do believe that in the straight-up military confrontation, the uh, the units of Corvinus should completely decimate what France has on the table. Because not only are these units better, but there's also like more of them right now. 43 population versus 25. This looks to be a difficult situation here for the Muslim. He uh, does have the Royal Institute here, so you know is able to get some of these uh, unique upgrades in. Uh, does have the, um, what's it called again, Bloodlines, I believe it, it is. Royal Bloodlines, the Cavalry Hit Points one that's in the uh, Imperial Age. That's researched. So these uh, bad boys are up to 310 health, which is really, really awesome. But of course, the King of Feudal Age, uh, Castle Age Knights now is going to be the Gilded Knight. Kind of taken away from the identity of the French Civilization. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Order of the Dragon deserves to have its design as well here okay so the gilded knights moving forward looking to take out this dock and then that that dock does does go down here so these these um, these fishing ships are going to be under like just a lot of fire here looks like the muslim is going to be able to retreat them but there's no more fish here on this side of the map so that's a pretty good dent in the french economy right there if you will we are building a keep, so that is going to kind of control this area uh, with the dock, the, the, the mining camp, and the stone mining camp, right? As well as offer some amount of protection for the sacred site as well here. This game is still, like, remarkably even, by the way, I must say. Uh, just in terms of, like, rote score. A lot of crossbowmen, royal knights here, out of the Muslim. Um... Geez, the tricky thing is though is that Jundak is like not even level three yet, so that's that's really really not uh, where you want to be here. Because if she were level three, then we could start working on um, getting these companions out of the keep. Well, and th those are really really strong units there. Corvin is moving forward here, looking to take out more of these fishing ships. Beautiful play by him, looking for the vulnerabilities in the French economy and looking to like really. Uh, lay down the hurt right there. There's almost basically no more fishing ships here left for France, whereas the Order of the Dragon are just wrapping up the gathering of these fish right here. Um, very nice play. Uh, we do have a counterattack coming in here out of the Muslim. Even that galley kind of has to hightail it out of there. It doesn't really want to be fighting there. Uh, there's not a lot of places to retreat to here. I think that dock is going to be forfeit. Corvinus forced to turn around here. And now we have that like that little death ball that we were talking about. Gilded Knights, Gilded Crossbowmen with a Prelate support on the back. Uh, I'm very, very interested to see exactly how this one pans out. Oh, it looks like we also have some veteran Gilded Horsemen right there. 310 hit points on a Horseman. Goodness graciousness. All right, a little bit of a contention right here. The Muslim needs to be a little bit careful here. It is possible that this is an overextension. He's going to get pinned between this army. Well... That's not ideal either from out of Corvinus, right? Because uh, these units are not fighting with the main army, so a little bit of a free pick right there for the Muslim. Now, of course, uh, back to the main point, though, is that this army, the the here we go, we do have level three out of Jund uh, for Jundak here. We have John, John's champion, extremely powerful unit in its own right. A little bit of an awkward engagement out of these gilded uh, knights right there. So Corvinus and the prelates are not in the fight; they're out here in the back as well. Not the best engagement. But let's have a look here. Uh, this is going to be Lanchester's Law uh, kicking in. Jean d'Arc has fallen. And then we have to bear in mind here that we are right next to the reinforcements of the Order of the Dragon base. So 
Uh, we're going to be a little bit closer on that one. It looks like all of the cavalry, like almost both sides, just kind of falling right there. Um, but these, I mean, these crossbowmen have 140 hit points and way more attack than the other ones do. Uh, these guys are going to go <laughs> just back to work here. And this looks like a very decisive, decisive, um, clean win out of the Corvinus. At the very least in, like, this area of the map, right? <laughs> These shore fish are, are, are theirs. Cool. So very well played at two Corvinus right now. Uh, this is going to allow him to push out back onto the map here. A second keep coming up right now out of the Muslim. Looking to protect the stone. This sacred site is still taken, which is quite nice. Perhaps the Muslim could have taken this one, though I'm not too sure. It looks like there was also a wolf there that could have been taken for Jean Dac's XP, but obviously, you know, it's a high octane game, so you're, you're probably a little bit more busy uh, focusing on other things on the map, right? I don't have Fog of War, so it's easy for me to criticize. So let's see here. The guild is crossbowmen moving across the map right now. 60 to 18 on the military population, and these are gilded units. I mean, this is not looking really, really good for the Muslim. At this point, Corvinus should be able to kind of push out on the map and prevent the uh, the gathering of more resources here. We do have a stone wall coming in out of the Muslim, so that's going to be able to protect... <laughs> that's really cool right there, the, the berry bush. As strong as a stone wall. Uh, so, yeah, this, this is going up on this side of the map. Looks like a ship just went down right there. And this is kind of going to... Oh, it looks like there was a hole in the wall. Is that a, is that accurate? How did these guys get through? I didn't see. I'd have to rewind the replay to do that, but I don't think that's on the table. Either way, we are looking to build up some rams right now. What else do we have here? Not a lot of military units left uh, on the map here for the Muslim. There's not enough staying power to really push this away. So I do predict that Corvinus is going to be capable of having a nice, solid push on the inside of the French base right there. This is just too much to deal with right now, right? And then this, these units down here are pretty much completely uncontested just due to the amount of pressure on the right side of the map. Remember that your best defense is sometimes the offense. So here, um, this attack... Coming out, of, uh, coming out of Corvinus up here to the north... On paper, it's supposed to like prevent this counterattack from happening, right? But it looks like uh, the, the Muslim is still going to push the issue, which is a proper thing to do, right? In an RTS game, you counterattack to where you can. But the, the, this is just a problem that is impossible, I think, for the Muslim to solve. So we're not too sure exactly how this one's going to pan out. This tower does go down. Uh, the mounted archer Jean d'Arc here, looking to put some uh, some pressure onto these villagers. And uh, putting up a keep right there, which is definitely a really, really good idea on paper. The problem is that there's just too many of these rams, right? And look at the amount of walls that go down when those rams get to work here. Corvinus looking really just to go for the juggler here at this point, And now going to be able to take out these stables that have the consecration on them. Goodness, dearie, that looks uh, just like a pretty brutal situation across the board here, despite the very close scores, right? And uh, GG is called right there. Corvinus does take it. Beautiful, beautiful game right there out of the Order of the Dragon.